Hi, this is Inval Innovation YouTube channel. In the system design tutorial series, today we will see about consistent hashing. Consistent hashing is one of the very important and interesting topic in today's distributed systems world. So first, we will see about what are the different topics we are going to cover in this video. First, we will see about what is distributed data systems and why we really need hashing uh, to store the data. And then second, we will see about hashing, how we can use hashing to store the request and get the request and uh, map it to different servers. Next we will see about problems with the hashing and we will see the need of consistent hashing. And here we will see about one of the very important and interesting topic, scalability in consistent hashing. That is how we can add or remove the server on the fly in consistent hashing. And this is where the consistent hashing really shines. Next we will see about consistent hashing, replication and fault tolerance. How we can make our system more resilient and uh, how we can replicate the data across multiple nodes and then thus by increasing the fault tolerance in our, our distributor system. And then we will see about the skewness uh, issue in consistent hashing and how we can mitigate that with the help of virtual nodes. Before seeing about uh, the distributor system, we will see how the data storage was there like 15-20 years back. Life was very simple at the time because we have only one centralized data server and then one server which gets all the requests and gives the response back to the user and we have only one centralized data store so the data store is not a problem but in today's current world we have our application spans globally so thus by increasing the request and response coming to that application and also we need to worry about scalability for example if you are working in amazon if you're working on facebook the applications are no more uh, serving a single country now it serves globally so thus by increasing the request you need to scale horizontally because whenever you scale something to a vertically you will hit a point that you can't scale more than that particular uh, physical limit here with distributor systems we will try to think of solution without hashing how we can store the data for example if i get an id or data here i can store to any server like for the sake of simplicity here i'm storing everything sequentially i will store everything to the server zero if the size exceeds then i will go with the server one server two server three and so on so by this way i can simply store there is no problem in persisting the data here but when it comes to retrieval that's when the problem starts for example if you want to retrieve a data with the id 34263 so obviously you need to start a linear search like you need to start from the server one you need to see whether uh, the server one contains this particular uh, data if the data is not present then obviously you need to go to the server one and then you need to go to server two and then you need to go to server three and then you need to go to server four and then you need to go to server five and then here we find the particular data which we are looking for this is not acceptable in today's fast moving world because you need to get the data in millisecond latency here i have only like six servers but in real systems it might not be even six servers it might be like hundreds of server so you can't get any data in less latency so here we really need some strategy to understand the data is stored in which server that's why we need hashing here we have a hash function i have a video about hash function and uh, what are the essential properties for a hash functions i have linked the video in the description and if you want to learn more about hash function you can go through that video here we have a hash function which takes the id of the input request uh, we have six server so the hash function we are using modulo operator just to get the remainder and then we are mapping that to the particular server for example here we have the request 34567 and then i am sending that to hash function so the hash function might return a value with that value i am trying to find the modulus of 6 and which gives a remainder 1 and then i am trying to map this particular data to the server 1 so if there is another request 48654 i am doing the same process i am finding the hash of this particular id and then i am performing modulo with 6 and then i am getting the remainder 0 and i am mapping to the server instance 0 and uh, this is follows the same for 76501 we have we are doing the hash function we got the remainder when we do modulo 6 as 4 and then we are storing this to server 4 this is perfectly fine and then I am doing this for all the data and then I have stored everything here. This is perfectly fine till now. So how we can retrieve the data here. So here I need to retrieve the data for 34263 ID and then 
here I need to perform the hash function of that particular ID and then I got the value 3 when I do the hash function modulus 6. So here I understand this data is present in the server instance 3. So I can directly go into the server instance 3 and I can get the value for this ID 34263. We can able to increase the performance drastically compared to storing the data randomly in any different instance. So far so good. But there comes a problem. Let's take, we found that like uh, we need to remove the server 5 or uh, the server 5 crashed and we need to map all the data from here to the different instance. I can map this particular data to any other instance. But if I do this, then I need to also change the data, everything. In the left hand side, we have like uh, the previously allocated data and here we have used hash function modular 6 because we previously had 6 instance so we used modular 6 but here now we have only 5 instance so we need to completely change the modular operation to 5 so here comes the problem because we not only need to map the server 5 instant data we also need to map all other instance data for example here let's take this first request which is present in server instance 0 and the request ID is 58654 and the same hash function we are using but here instead of modulo 6 we are using modulo 5 this gives us a different remainder that is 4 so here I need to map the data 48654 in the server instance 0 to server instance 4 I need to repeat this for each and every data so here I will try to run this animation go So here we can able to clearly see only two data are still with the same servers where it was before. All other data other than these two data are changed location to a different server. This is a huge problem. For example, if you have like uh, petabytes of information and then whenever there is a need for scaling up or down, some of your server goes down. So in that case, you need to remap all the data to a different servers. So this is where the consistent hashing shines. So consistent hashing is a distributed hashing scheme that operates independently of the number of servers or nodes in a distributed hash table. And it also powers many high traffic dynamic websites and uh, web application. And there are some applications which provides this out of box. For example, memcached provides this consistent hashing out of the box. For the sake of simplicity, I am trying to take this as a circle because here we are trying to connect a link between the array end to the array starting. Here 360 is the end and then 0 is the starting point. Uh, for any circle we know we have like 360 angles. Here the 360 and 0 are like the same points. Think this like array. Let's take we have 5 servers. We need to start hashing the server IDs also. For example here I am taking the server IDs as the IP and I am using some hash function uh, to act on the particular IP and then it gives us a value and then with the value I am trying to do the modulo on 360 because we you know we have like 360 angles here and then I got like 225. So this 225 maps to this particular point in the circle. The second server instance trying to do the same like hash of IP and then modulus of 360 and I am getting the value 75. The angle 75 maps here. So I am mapping the server one here and then this goes for uh, server 2 we got the value 147. I am mapping that particular uh, angle in the circle and then next one is we have like server 3 its angle is 349 so i'm mapping the corresponding angle in the circle and then we have server 4 we are getting 285 and i'm mapping that particular corresponding angle in the circle now we have mapped the server next we need to map the data also now we can use hash function it either it can be same hash function or a different hash function for data for example if you are using particular hash function for server it need to be common for all the server if you are using a particular hash function for data it need to be constant for all the data here we have a hash function which takes the id of the input request and then i am trying to do the modulo of 360 here so for the data we got like uh, 54, 114, and uh, 342, 7, 115, 338, 182, 146, and so on. So I am trying to map this particular data points uh, to the corresponding angles in the circle. So here I have mapped the server as well as data. So far so good. We will assign this data to the server. The consistent hashing can be clockwise or anti-clockwise. So here I am trying to use the 
clockwise. So here I need to map the data to the nearest write server. For example, in this case of 76673, the nearest write server is server 1. So I am mapping this particular data to the server 1. So for 34567, the nearest server is server 1. And for 34210, the nearest server is server 1. And for 48654, the nearest server is server 1. And for 34263, the nearest server is server 1. So we need to do this for each and every server so we can map the corresponding data to the nearest write server. So now we have mapped all the data to the server. As I mentioned, this can be performed in clockwise or anti clockwise. For example, if I try to map the data points to the nearest write server, then it is going to be the clockwise. So if I try to map the data to the nearest left server, then it is going to be anti clockwise consistent hashing. So what's the benefit we are ripping out of uh, this consistent hashing? The real benefit is whenever we want to scale our system or to add or remove server. So here no, you no need to remap the data in other servers. You will see this the example. For example, here I need to remove the server 4. So here in this case, I completely removed the server 4. So now this data 65440 need to be mapped to S3 because this server is immediate right to the data 65440. So here I have mapped this data 65440 to S3. Now all other data are really untouched. So this makes things really really easy because this makes the system flexible to add or remove the servers because if I try to remove the server, I no need to worry about the existing data. I just need to worry about the data which are mapped to that particular server. Here I need to map that particular data to the nearest server. That's the only thing which I need to do. So here the change is very, very minimal whenever we are adding or removing a server. Let's take this same with adding a server. Like here I am adding a server S4 and then here if you see all the data which were previously mapped to S1 like 76673, 34567 and 34210. All this particular data need to be mapped from server 1 to server 4. This is the only change because right hand server for all these three data is S4. So this is the only change which we need to do. All other data in all other server remains intact. Now we have seen how we can handle adding or removing a server. So this is a bigger issue with our hashing problem because we can't remove or add server without altering the data in other servers. So here we will see about server replication or node replication and how we can make our system fault tolerant or resilient to server crash. For example, here we have like different servers. What if some of the server goes down? So to tackle this, we can perform data replication. So there are different data replication strategies. Like one of the easiest solution is try to replicate data to the nearest two servers. For example, here replicate all the data in the server instance three to server instance four and server instance one, because these two servers are the nearby right hand side server for the server instance three. So by this way, if something goes wrong with the server instance 3, then I can get the data from the server instance 4 and server instance 1. I will try to perform this in all the server instance. For example, for server instance 4, the backup server instance are server instance 1 and server instance 2. And for the server instance 1, backup server instances are server instance 2 and server instance 0. And then for the server instance 2, the backup server instances are server instance 0 and server instance 3. And for server instance 0, the backup server instances are server instance 3 and server instance 4. Now we will see how we can handle the fault tolerance uh, with the help of this replication whichever we have performed. Let's take server 1 is really malfunctioning and then this crashes and it goes down. Okay, now we need all this data to be mapped to server instance 2. So here we have already mapped this particular server instance 1 data to server instance 2 and server instance 0. So here in this case, I can make all this data which is already available in S2 as active. So all this particular data can go directly to this server instance too. So here, since the server one is completely gone, we also need to change our replication. The server instance three now replicated across our instance four and server instance two. Now the server instance four gets replicated across server instance two and server instance zero. Now this is how we can mitigate the crashing in our server and thus by increasing the fault tolerance in our system. Everything seems to be okay. Uh, there is a bigger angle between server instance 0 and server instance 3. As of now only uh, the load of server instance 3 is 3. That is perfectly fine. 
if that load is really increasing and uh, this data sits between the server instance 0 and server instance 3 range then obviously there is a problem here for example here the load of server instance 3 increases and then here also we have the angle between the server instance 4 and server instance 2 is really big a new data comes in then we also need to accommodate all those data in the particular server so if you see the load the load for uh, server instance 0 is 10 so here the load of uh, server instance 0 is 5 and here the load of server instance 2 is 12 and the load of server instance 3 is 9 and the load of server instance 4 is 3. So here the data is not equally shared among the different servers. So this gives us a problem. The data load is not equally shared across the four different instances. How we can really mitigate this problem? This is where we can use the virtual server node. For example, here we have only four physical servers, but we can create a more virtual uh, server tags which maps to the particular physical server. For example, here in this case of server instance zero, here I have assigned the weight as 4. For now, we will think all the server has the same weight. I will cover what is weight later in this video. The weight is 4. So I have 4 different tags for this particular server instance 0. Taking the IP and I am just incrementing it with 4 different values. And then I am trying to find the hash functions and uh, hash functions modulo 360. So this gives us 4 different virtual tags or 4 different virtual angles. For the same physical server server instance 0 225 80 293 and 359 for the server instance 2 we have the same weight 4 and then here i am trying to get four hashtags and then i am trying to perform the modulus of 360 and then i got like four different tags here also like 147 91 177 and 340 and then same for server instance 3 we have like 349 248, 208, and 61. And then same for uh, server instance 4, we have angles such as 38, 157, 118, and 310. So now we can able to clearly see we have so many tags and this tags are also present randomly and then thus by reducing the load on a particular server. For example, now we need to use the same strategy to map the data to the particular server. So here we are using clockwise consistent hashing so we need to map the data to the nearby right server here i'm mapping 57459 to the s0 tag uh, that maps to the physical server server instance 0 so here this tends to normalize the load across multiple server now what is weight here for example if you have some systems which you feel has more physical capability for example here in this case of data store 4 we can increase the weight accordingly for example in this case i feel the weight can be 6 so here i am adding two more tags if i add two more tags to this then i can use six different tags for the same server instance 4 by this way the probability of getting data into the server instance 4 increases so by this way, you can map the weight to the different servers. Some of the servers really doesn't have that physical capability. Then you can decrease the weight there and then you can increase the weight in any server you want. So this is one of the real advantage of uh, using uh, the consistent hashing. So here we have seen about how we can mitigate the skewness problem with the help of virtual server tags. We have covered everything in consistent hashing. I believe this video might be really helpful if you are starting on system design. And in this series, I will be covering a lot on system design. I will be trying to go through each and every system design concept. Please provide your feedback. Is this helpful or how I can improve these videos that may be greatly helpful. Consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and like this video if you really like this content.